Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. What is up, guys? Welcome to Drinking Bros. We have a uh, very special guest today. Uh, first, though, I'm your host, Rob Fox, joined as always by Dan Holloway, and we have comedian Jamie Lisso on with us. What is up, man? How you doing? Good, man. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, nice to see you. Let me ask you this. Before we get to anything else, how the fuck did uh, you end up being born in Greece? Are your parents Greek, or what what happened there? Uh, I'll tell you what, man. It's Greece, New York. Okay, good. Okay, so Greece, New York. uh, well, my parents were born in Greece, New York. But yeah, it's like it's like Rochester, New York, near Buffalo. Oh, I see. I don't know. I don't know anything about that area really. I know that uh, they used they used to be good at basketball up there, and now it's okay. What like Syracuse? Just the Northeast oh, okay. in general. Yeah, that is correct. The only thing yeah. you need to know about like that area is when you're born there, you just are planning your exit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you just can't wait to get the fuck out. Like it is. It, I, it's it's one of those things, man. Like you just you kind of want to you kind of want to get out. I, it's fun to go back and visit, but that's everyone's plan. Well, like, I know that you're like a big basketball fan, right? So you grew up in like the heyday of the Big East, I would imagine, when it was still good out there. I did love Syracuse. I was a little kid when Syracuse was amazing, and I used to go to yeah. games. And that I don't follow it as much now, but those were good times, man. I used to ask for fuck. I used to get like autographs from high school kids, which seems really creepy now. And, <laughs> But I loved it, man. There's some kind of energy back then. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they kind of fell off. As long as you're not getting those autographs today, because they're still grown men. There's many like a Kentucky fan that will absolutely fangirl over a 17 year old. Yeah, but yeah. now, now I think it's it would probably be more acceptable now because you're seeing these kid, kids uh, and and pardon the uh, not it's not even a pun, just pardon the phrase, but they're being groomed from an early age to be professional athletes, right? right. So you know, like everybody knew when LeBron James was 15 years old that he was going to be a superstar. Probably yeah. 12. Yeah, uh, that's true. If you get an autograph from a good high school player, you have to hope he goes pro, so you're not a creep. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, I think the FBI just stop. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. <laughs> there is a point. There's actually a points per game limit on if it's FBI or cool. Well, hey, I mean, look, life is all about taking risk, right? <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of taking risk, you live in Alaska now. Um, I yeah. I, I, I've re- I've heard the story in one of your comedy specials. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, I think I watched it uh, maybe a year ago, but it was uh, it's a pretty interesting story. But tell me what it's like living in in, in Alaska and being a comedian. I mean, I, obviously you just don't do stand up at the local fucking and and the local house. No. But no, it's awful. It's a, it's one. It's a terrible thing. Like no one should ever do that. It's it's almost <laughs> it's almost impossible. Like the the short version of the story is I married a girl from Alaska and then eventually she wanted to move back there. And then a, like two weeks after I bought a house there, I, I, we got divorced and she was dating some other guy and living in my house. And so my kids are up there. And so I just, it's, it, it's, it's tough, man, but it's, uh, it, you know, it's, I was going to pretend it was cool. And then I realized I could just be honest. It's fucking horror. It's, it's, um, I don't even live in like the cool part of Alaska. Like if you were to go on a cruise, you go to Juneau, which is beautiful. There's like eagles and whales and Anchorage. Free. And I live in Fairbanks, which is what you see in the movies where it's dark all the time and super cold. And I'm always complaining to my buddies. Like it's so fucking dark. I'm like depressed. And my friends are like, but isn't it beautiful? And I go, I don't know. It's fucking dark. I have no idea. I'd kill myself, but I can't find a rope. There's no light. Well, it's, it's I mean- very tough, man. But somehow it, but it's fun seeing the kids and you guys probably know, like it, when you're in comedy, it is fun to go back home to a place that is not in the industry. There is something about that that I like where I don't just wake up in LA and New York all yeah. the time. I leave to go back. It's gotta be nice to like get outside of this sort of just comedian circle jerk that seems to like grow, yeah, and grow so. all the time. Yeah. It's a, I, I mean, you, you don't want to be in an echo chamber as a comedian, especially somebody that does observational comedy. Cause then what are you observing? You're just, it's like that, uh, 30 rock thing where Tracy Jordan's like, don't stop looking at me in the eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you don't want to yeah. end up like that, obviously. No, I mean, it, it's- you're exactly right. Dude. You're exactly right. Because look at all the airline airplane jokes. Look at all the jokes about it. It's because that's all we fucking do as yeah. comedians. If you just, get into that circle of traveling and hanging out with your buddies. It's all the same. I think it's gotten really bad with like the meta shit too, where all they care about now is making the other comedians laugh or, or Uh, bombing to make other comedians laugh. And it's like, Oh, so you're not doing your job or uh, like that. You're trying to make the exact wrong person laugh. Well, I mean, it depends on which comedian you're trying to make laugh. If it's Bill Burr, who owns All Things Comedy, mm-hmm. or yeah, you know, some or Rogan or somebody that can make you in the industry, maybe that makes sense. But right, 
probably not your friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Although you you're know, still right. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, you're so right about if it's not a big person like that, you're yeah. so right that like, I've been to so many comedy scenes where it's kind of open micers making another open micers laugh. Like, man, we fucking killed. All right. We got to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Like they don't even do. What do you think it is job. about uh, the, the guys, especially who get started in kind of the counterculture open mic uh, comedy scene who have these like, and I know a lot of them, not a lot, but uh, many of them are my friends and they seem to have like this uh, self-destructive streak. Like anytime a sponsor approaches them or something, the first thing they say is, I'm not going to fucking bend. No, like, dude, <laughs> you're an entertainer. You got to make money somehow. This is, unless you want to panhandle for the rest of your life and tell jokes for nickels. Right. Like, what is it? I don't know. I mean, is, is it even a fear? Because it is a safe place to make your friends laugh. And there, there is that thing you have to get over. I worked with Schimmel. I'm so old. I worked with Schimmel once on the road. And he, I saw him walk into the club. He was headlining. And I immediately switched gears and did my edgy shit. And at the end of the show, he said, Hey man, don't ever fucking do that again. Like I don't book any rooms. I'm just a guy that's working with you. You have to, he, he's like, Leno goes up and makes the crowd laugh. That's why he hosts the tonight show. And he gave me a good talking to about that and said, stop trying to be cool. Stop trying to impress people that yeah. can't help you. There's not there, any stuff. No, there's a number of guys that have worked and I mean like guys who are selling out arenas who have worked clean their entire careers. Now we know, Leno and 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 uh, we know all about Seinfeld, but Brian Regan and Gaffigan for the most part, unless he's doing uh, smaller venues, keeps it pretty clean. There's plenty of dudes. Yeah. Just be yourself, I guess, is probably the solution there because that's what got right. you to the point where people know. think you're funny, right? I totally agree. I wouldn't sell it in an arena if I traveled with the Lakers. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the Lakers but, can't get it together right now, so maybe yeah. you're right about that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but, man. dude, you said it, man. I think it is being yourself. And also, it's it's that thing where you have to not care what other people fucking think. Like, look at – well, look at Norm, who did it perfectly. He's mm -hmm. making all the comedians laugh and the audience laugh. But, like, you got to try to do the job. And, and you have to say, like, what is my goal? Do I want to make seven open micers laugh for these guys? Or do yeah. I want to make a living at this? And, and, and it's harder to make the audience laugh at those open mics. It's kind of easier to make your friends laugh. These are – those are fucking tough shows, but if you yeah. buckle down and go, I'm going to get five minutes that works everywhere, mm -hmm. then you'll be good. Yeah, I think there's something intrinsic to becoming a professional comedian that involves a little bit of contrarianism probably, mm -hmm. right? Like uh, you, you mentioned Norm. I've seen him a couple of times. The The second time I saw him was at Cobbs in San Francisco, and it was like, this was like 2016, so it wasn't like full-on Me Too or anything like that, but it was a pretty sensitive time <laughs> for trans jokes. And we were in San Francisco, and he did an entire fucking hour long set on trans people. Just, <laughs> oh I mean, my God. And I think he did it because, not to be a dick, he was just like trying to challenge himself. Like, right. can I take this crowd that's right. primed to hate this material and make them laugh? And he did. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that is something that uh, people misunderstand about comedy. These comedians aren't trying to uh, offend you, they're trying to take something. This is, this is the craft, right? It's like taking a bad cut of meat or something and making it into something delicious. Mm -hmm. You take this mm -hmm. subject matter that is super dicey and you're like, I can, I can do something really clever right here and thoughtful and, and make this material ex not only acceptable, but enjoyable for people who otherwise would disagree with it. Right. You know what I mean? They also mistake a lot of it for a lot of comedy and jokes for, um, even if they, even if it is like meant to be a, a funny or whatever, they mm. still mistake it for like a, a proclamation. Oh yeah, like, like these this are my beliefs. This isn't real, guys. Just so you know, this is a comedy show. Uh, I, <laughs> right, man. I don't know. Do you run into that a lot? I mean, you're a white dude. You probably run into that quite a bit. Yeah, I'll be honest with you though. I'm not. I don't consider myself. I'm not even being self-deprecating. I'm just being honest. I don't consider myself funny enough to tackle most issues because I, I'm scared. Like I'll think of a funny thing and go, but I don't know if that offends this guy. I would say the edgiest I ever got was when I got divorced and had like these personal experiences not even edgy but like my the guy that my ex-wife ended up with three weeks after they got together he was putting something on the roof of his car with a bungee cord and he he, he lost his eye <laughs> and uh and it was just this bizarre thing because i was like i know i and I, my first thought was like oh my god i think i just used one of my wishes <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 you well you, you gotta know? be careful so, now like, yeah and yeah. stuff like that, like there could be someone with one eye, but it comes from such a personal place. I, in that, my God, I, I like the norms of the world. They must feel so good because when I do that joke, 
I feel like a guy with one eye would be like, that's fucking funny, dude. Like that yeah. guy deserves that. And it does feel good when you can like work around it and, and make your case for why it's funny. Yeah. And as a, you know, I don't, uh, our other host d- has done stand up quite a bit. I've done a lot, plenty of live performances. I don't really do stand up though. Uh, and it is, it's a grind. You know what I mean? The, the, the timing, making sure that the laughs that you know where the laughs are coming. So you don't get cut off in the actual punchline. If you're, if you're, popping out two punchlines in a row. You don't want the second funnier one uh, to get, you know, drowned Drown, out yeah. by the audience's laughter and shit like right. that. I just have no patience or tolerance for that bullshit. It's such a, it's such a <laughs> skill to do it uh, that anybody that can do it successfully is, is impressive to me, to be honest. Yeah, it's funny, man. I do, like, I, I, you know, I've headlined by myself for, like, probably 15 years, but I just started nothing impressive but i mean i was headlining clubs and i started touring with someone that sells tickets i started touring with rob schneider Mm -hmm. and um this dude sells tickets like i'm in sarasota right now we have nine sold out shows that started yesterday and there's something about the crowd if it's they all paid 50 bucks the room is completely packed that makes what you just brought up like a little bit easier Mm -hmm. because it's really on your terms almost like you know i love radio because we don't have to fucking wait for someone to laugh or if they don't like who gives a shit like this is what this is what's on the air. And if they're laughing at home, they're laughing at home. I sort of love that about a radio show or a mm-hmm. podcast. It's like very pure. You're not waiting for this weird feedback. And it's funny when you're in a show like that, it's so much easier when everyone is sort of on your side from the beginning because yeah, they've sure. paid their and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it used to be. Uh, so I can't remember which comedian tell, used to tell this fucking joke. I honestly can't remember who it was, uh, but they, it was a whole set on how he hated magicians and shit uh but he did have some empathy for them because a magic show is the only show where the audience comes trying to fuck up the show like right. they want right. to they want to <laughs> understand and disprove right. what the fuck's happening there but i think it's kind of happened in comedy now like it and on the especially in the open mics and stuff like that people it seems like there is a much larger group of people who show up like primed to, to be upset by something they hear. Like in your case, what you're talking about, if somebody spent 50 bucks to be there, you know, they came there to laugh probably. Yeah. Right. At least most, the vast majority of people it's aren't going to spend 50 bucks to come home, fucking get it's a home game. Yeah. Yeah. Home game is a good way to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you're even in this situation, like Rob gets a little bit political and I think that's unexpected because you're going, Oh, it's Deuce Bigelow. And then it's a little <laughs> bit surprised. Yeah. And so we do get, we do get some people that paid the 50 bucks that really will. I've seen people stand up. I mean, last week, someone like stood up in the show and sort of said, you know, that's offensive. Like it's, it's crazy, man. Like people are so much more sensitive and they, so many more people like walk out than used to. And the only thing I can do to solve that problem is to set up my t-shirt booth before they walk. <laughs> uh, do you notice? So people definitely show up, I think to open mics and stuff or, uh, and I guess, like you said, at the big shows, to be like looking to be offended maybe or whatever. Yeah. But I think it even goes beyond that. And I, I the saying like everyone's a critic is really old. Right. Mm. But I kind of think, have you noticed recently more people kind of being like, like the rise of like the comedy nerd and stuff like that. Like people want to be, if they can't be a comedian, they want to be like the arbiters of comedy. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. have you noticed yeah. that? Well, more in audiences? That's, that's the old adage. Those that can't do teach. Right. Right. I mean, that's, it's the same thing. Like I can't, I don't have the talent or skill or patience or whatever mental acuity to do what you're doing, but I can sit here and press yeah. uh, rewind and play and rewind and play and find something wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Like, fuck you, dude. Shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, dude, you're hundred percent right. And what's weird about comedy is I, you said you did live perform. Is it a band? Are you know, are, no, no, no. We do it? live co- uh, uh, comedy shows a lot, but it's not the oh, same. Shit. Like being on a panel and telling jokes and having a, co- a like a conversation. That's not in anywhere yeah. close to the same as doing stand up comedy. But not, not that I wouldn't like, I wouldn't mind being on stage by myself. That's not the point, but, but doing a fucking 15 to 45 minute long narrative in a row like that, just, yeah. that's, I would get bored doing that. So I would do it poorly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know myself. Don't you think part of it too, is that if you go to see a band and a guy plays the guitar, you don't sit in the crowd and go, man, I could fucking play that. I could play that. <laughs> but with comedy, everyone is really funny at Arby's. There's like one guy that's real funny at Arby's yeah. like, that works at, the fucking off. And so I think there is this thing with comedy where people go, fuck dude, I could, I could fucking do that. I could get up there and do that. I don't think they realize yeah. that like being funny with your friends is, is so different than a room. Well, the reality, the reality of that situation is being actually good at stand up. Like people who have been in the stand up comedy for a long time, who've 
like for 20, like Steve Byrne and people like that who have just been doing, yeah. Pri- he, he had Sullivan and Son, but primarily doing stand up for his career, right? Writing a little bit. But yeah, his, his, he's a beast, man. I yeah, love it. He's, he's great. His main nut has been stand up and he's like, he's just such a professional at delivering all the material and shit like that. And he's been doing it for so long. People, and then doing the specials, right? People like, oh, he did an hour long special. Dave Chappelle worked for fucking an hour and 15 minutes and made $20 million. No, he did 180 performances of that material first. Right. right? Not, that's that, right. not that that's not a good paycheck still. I right? Mean, I think anybody would kill right. for $20 million a set. But doing 180 performances to get ready for that one hour long special, people don't have the tolerance for that shit. But it's like saying NFL players work once a week. Well, they do. Right. <laughs> unless you're unless you're OBJ, then you don't work at all. Right, right, right. Right. Uh, you, he, he's going to get released today. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, and oh, no. shit. shit on this afternoon, probably in celebra- celebration. He wanted to leave the Browns. Probably, I think he. I think what really soured that relationship is just the puns. Yeah. Because he likes to get shit on and not the Browns a, and stuff. It's just not a good fit. Not a great situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know what his vaccination status is, but maybe he can go to Green Bay. Green Bay. And immunized. Immunized. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna cover yourself in shit, you need some shots. I, I don't. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I think his immune system is probably better than anybody. He's been getting shit on literally. That's fair. Yeah, natural immunity on, through, through 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 human feces. Yeah, through shisa. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Are you a football fan? Dude, I like a lot of sports, but I don't follow. I'm like a non guy. Like I don't. I watch the U- UFC is my number one. I've never missed a second of a round of UFC. But that's kind of my only sports. Is with the I have three kids and the the comedy schedule. You just can't really yeah. follow it. You're not playing fantasy baseball, right? I mean, shit. <laughs> no, it's, it's I'm like not. you got to set lineups I, all the time. No, I I did fuck a fantasy football cheerleader last night, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> you know. I don't, I don't do the fantasy stuff, but I, it's, that sounds fun to me. The fantasy stuff sounds super fun. It is. If you're with the right group of guys, I mean, really, uh, sports and anything that men do is about kind of, uh, institutionalizing some low level, uh, low risk competition. So we can talk shit to each other. That's really psychologically all it's about. That's why we do anything together. Like, Oh, your steak turned out pretty good. Good job, buddy. And we assign social currency for that. Right. (laughs) <laughs> I, I just put it on the fucking grill, dude. I don't know what you to tell. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but it is fun to talk shit to each can other. I, can I ask you a? Can I ask you a stupid question? Uh, so I don't know even how to do fantasy stuff. Um, if you have a player, like you know the dude that got the deep, Henry the Ruggs, fucking yeah. deep. What's his name? Henry Ruggs the third. I Henry Ruggs third. Yeah. Say he's on your fantasy football team, and this happens. Are you just fucked? Like, like, is he gone out of your? Is that yeah, a thing yeah. that could happen? Yeah, like if, he, if he's like happens. one of your top players, you're especially fucked, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. You know, I mean, I don't want to get too far in the weeds on fantasy football, but receivers, quarterbacks, and running backs are obviously really important. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, but gotcha. Uh, yeah. Thank God I had him on my uh, fantasy murder team. Yeah, I know. So it, we've got uh, uh, we've got an OJ Simpson helmet and jersey. Whoop. There we go, right there. Helmet, jersey, okay. uh, signed. Uh, both of them signed in the blood of Nicole Brown. No, it's not true. Oh my uh, god! Look, I didn't sign the goddamn thing. I just own it. Yeah, we didn't kill anyone. Jesus Christ! I'm just. Well, I have killed people, but yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not in this country legally. Uh, we've yeah, got Pete Rose. Studio, but yeah, it's nice. Studio. We got Pete Rose, Dennis Rodman, uh, Tom Selleck over here somewhere. I don't think he's killed anybody. No, it's a little unfair to Pete Rose and Dennis Rodman that we're like, oh, yeah, it's you in the OJ jersey. It's like No, gambling. we put them on the other side with, uh, with Hulk Hogan, who he only said the N-word once so, so far as we can tell. <laughs> well, on video, yeah. Yeah, that's the only proof we have. It's just weird that he said it during sex. <laughs> I know. I mean, what, was, what could possibly be going through your mind? <laughs> I just wonder about those. Like, it's, I don't like to judge people necessarily by their private moments, but it does make you wonder – what the fuck yeah. could have been going through your mind where that's what was in your head after busting a nut? Right. You know what I mean? Cause I'm thinking when I, when I'm after I've just come, I'm like, all right, I got to get the fuck out of here. Uh, the cops are coming, whatever else is, is going on. <laughs> uh, but apparently he did. And he was banging his buddy's wife. Yeah. And his buddy wanted him to, wow. but they were trying to set him up to, it was a legit like swing situation. Yeah. But he, they were, was it Bubba the love sponge? Yeah. And were they in on the whole Gawker thing or what, what happened? He there? was, Bubba was filming him without his knowledge. Mm. 
and I then I don't know how the tape then made its way. Was to, that in Florida? Because that's a two party consent state. It was in Florida. Does there that not go. seem? How could that not be in Florida? Crazy. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I even know if, that, even if I. Go ahead. Oh, so I was gonna say, even if I was with the hottest girl in the world and she wanted me to recite rap lyrics while I banged her up and skip the N word. Yeah, I mean, you got to yeah. just assume that you're being recorded at all times. I. <laughs> Well, you are. If your phone's in the room, you probably... Yeah. Well, we just found out this morning, uh, Brittany's at my girlfriend's over here, and she was looking on her phone because the uh, Roomba's misbehaving. Yeah. And it turns out that <laughs> motherfucker's just taking pictures all over the place. That's how That's how it maps out your house is it takes little pictures no. and stuff. Yeah, dude. So it's it's got a, like, a, there's a 3D map inside of the Roomba that tells it where to go vacuum now mm-hmm. after it's been there for a certain <laughs> amount of time. And now I'm worried. So the federal government has a layout of your house. Well, I mean, they probably had that anyway. That's right. The fair. Chinese government has a layout of your house. The Chinese government, through Samsung and, and Apple, had that long ago. So well, it's, at this point, it just doesn't matter. I just don't want them to be able to follow me around the house. Yeah. Right? Like, it's fine if you can see what I'm doing in one room. I can go into my bathroom and you can't see me. Right. You know what I mean? But if the room is like... If I if I'm like in there taking a shit, pounding off or something, and the room is like trying to... Like a cat paw <laughs> underneath the door trying to get in there, I'm like, whoa, buddy. This, this is my private time. Dude, that is frightening. You see a picture of just a beautifully, you know, vacuum drug, and then just you jacking off way in the yeah. background. <laughs> it's like blur- terrifying. It's me blurry in the background, but you can tell I've got like a fucking belt around my neck and shit. Like, God damn it. I'm definitely <laughs> definitely going to end up paying a lot more alimony <laughs> when this divorce happens. Um, so what else? Uh, what you, you said you guys are in Florida right now, eh? Yeah, we're in Sarasota, Florida at this club that's been here for 30 years called McCurdy's Comedy Club. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Sold out a bunch of shows. It's it's been great, man. It's a it's it's a great club. It's just like an old school club, and uh, and it is such. Where are you guys located? We're in Austin. Austin, hell yeah! Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's such a free state. It yeah. just feels it just feels free. It's, Everything about it. It's funny. Every time I go to comedy shows here, there will be at least one or two uh, L.A. or New York comedians um that are here just to do shows for the weekend uh and they're like oh it's so nice to not be wearing masks i'm like yeah it is that's why we (laughs) never did it (laughs) we didn't do it yeah we never we never did it dude i love how i love how texas and florida went hey you know this COVID thing we're gonna fucking skip it yeah like just skipping everything and everything turns out the same if you look at the research (laughs) you guys are doing fine yeah yeah we did yeah we're doing all right it turns out that uh 500 million years of human evolution is better than six months of science yeah, who, who, yeah. Who well, to, who to thunk it? I have uh, Aaron Rodgers' crystals, so yeah. that's why I'm doing yeah. okay. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, if you're, You can't just walk around rubbing crystals on yourself 24 hours a day because that's going to attract some unnecessary attention, some unwanted attention right. probably, right? Uh, are they using, like, crystal butt plugs or something? Crystal. I mean, how are you keeping that thing in you? Yeah, I would, you would think that or maybe, like, a crystal, like, dynamite vest. Oh, yeah, shit. Just, like, <sighs> strapped to you. Man, I mean, that's, that's serving two purposes, too, right? <laughs> Uh, although I don't think the crystal rubbing crowd is into the body shaming stuff either. No. You know what I mean? So not, it's not like a cummerbund or anything. No, 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 no. Man, I, I don't know. I, it's, I've, I love this situation with Aaron Rodgers because it is almost like a microcosm for America's political bullshit right now. They seem to be like the traditional crazy anti-vax people mm-hmm. and not just like we don't want to be told what to do kind of folks. And – they just kind of get lumped in with everybody else. Yeah. And like, so I, you, you're faced with this decision. Like, do I support this guy and his weird bullshit? No, definitely not. Cause they're rubbing like deer shit on themselves or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Or do I support this other guy who is like threatening people's livelihoods? Right. I'm like, all right, cool. I guess I'll just hang out and drink <laughs> and wait, wait. I'm going to be honest with you. Go. I missed the part of the crystal rubbing shit part of the Aaron Rodgers story. Oh, yeah. Well, Shailene okay. Woodley, his girlfriend, is a super hippie, and that's what they do, right? They don't use, like, deodorant or take medicine. Oh. It's kind of like a naturalistic version of, of uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? No blood transfusions, <laughs> no bullshit. We right. don't believe in that. Uh-huh. We put our dick inside the earth if we get herpes and it goes away, mm-hmm. uh, which I've been doing that for recreation for years, which is – Explains why I've never had herpes, I guess. But I actually I thought it was going to explain why so many trees in Austin had herpes. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> trees can't file a lawsuit, so I'm not going to get fucking ushered over here. Just tired of seeing a tree with an open flesh sore. I'm like, how did this even get here? <laughs> it's like running sores. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, who else on the ticket? Is it you and Rob? And who else? Some local dicks? It's just me and Rob. Just just the two of us. Oh, nice. And you were yeah. in, you were in uh, Rob's show, correct? 
Yeah, man. So we have we have a Netflix show. It's actually still hanging around on there. But yeah, I was on. Uh, it's called Real Rob, and uh, I played I played his assistant. And it's weird. I was just a writer on the show, mm. and his assistant's a pretty it's a pretty big role. And it was cast to someone else. And then um, one day we were in his kitchen. It was me, him, and his wife. And he goes, he's like, shit, man, we lost this actor. Who the heck? We were filming like in a week. He goes, who are we going to get to play my assistant? Like, we're totally fine. And as he's saying this, I'm bringing him and his wife tea. Like, I just do, I just do nice things for people. Sometimes. Right. I'm literally serving them tea. And he goes, uh, dude, why don't you read for the role of assistant? And so just at Rob's house during a writing session, I sat down. You know, you, for an audition, you get so nervous or whatever. Not this shit. This was just like two seconds. Right. And then I got that role, role from like a weird just circumstance like that. Fuck it's yeah. really weird. Well, you were you were being an assistant yeah. at the time. You were you were I was being an assistant. Yeah, you were auditioning without even knowing it. Yeah. I mean you were already working for him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it was, Why not? That's yeah. easy. You've, the, you've already taken your physical. Yeah. Right? So or whatever. <laughs> been yeah. been background checked. Uh that's that's cool. How long has the show been on? It's well, we have two seasons, but it's been on there for five years. Mm. Yeah. Are you guys making any more? Is it still just on there? Well, the way we did it was like we own it still Netflix. It was Netflix original, but they licensed it. And so we get it back in a few months and we yeah. actually just got someone pretty credible. I know in this business that anything can fall apart anytime and nothing's guaranteed. But we just got someone that like really wants season three. And so it's already written. And um if we shot it, we could we could sell all three to a different network, hmm. which I think might be fun. I love Netflix, but damn man, you get an email on Monday like, Hey, we just added nine million shows. Like it's yeah, sometimes right. you get lost in the shuffle a little bit. So yeah, it looks like it could come back for season three, but we're you know we're kind of working on other shit. We're not we're not really counting on it. When when uh, the pandemic started, we lost all of our work and had nothing going on. And we wrote a movie and somehow got financing, and we we just finished shooting that like um, three months ago. And it's with like uh, I don't know if you guys know Jackie Sandler, Adam Sandler's wife, that shows yeah, up in yeah, yeah. a lot of his movies. She's a great actress. And I don't know if she's ever had a role where she could really get a chance to, you know, stretch. And she was amazing. And like John Cleese is in it and Rob's in it. And oh, wow. So that we're, that's going to be coming out in a couple months. Well, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, she probably hasn't really had to do any real work because yeah. she, I mean, how do you spend the amount of money that the, that motherfucker's made? Right. That, that <laughs> seems like I want to do, somebody needs to do a, re, uh, a reboot. I hate reboots, but somebody needs to do a reboot of Spending Brewster's Millions. Mm -hmm. And it's like a fucking Vine video. It's 30 seconds long. You know what I mean? <laughs> because you could spend $30 million like that. Right, right. What would the amount of money be now that you need to spend in 30 oh, fucking God. days? Mackenzie Bezos can, <clears throat> can't spend her money. Right? Like it keeps coming back. Well, there, I think there were some parameters, right? You can't just give it away to charity. And you can't right. have any assets after. So you can't like buy stock with it or anything like okay. that. So you have to throw parties. I mean, I guess you could buy a yacht and crash it into the fucking side of a, a, a I don't know, whatever the fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something like that. I don't remember what the exact could, rules were. I mean, were. maybe if you buy a yacht, somehow like sink an aircraft carrier. Well, the uh, U.S. Navy almost did that about a month ago, right? <laughs> and it cost $3 billion, that, right. that fucking sub that they almost wrecked into the side of an underground uh, or an underwater mountain. You should be careful about that, by the way. Yeah. I'm not trying to brag, but I think I could spend $30 million on therapy, depending on the amount of time I had. Yeah. Well, I mean, look. I think that might not be a bad one. Is the, I think you need to explore potentially having a superpower because uh, within a month of getting fucked over, you fucking took somebody's eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like <laughs> that's you should you should look into that. I mean, that'd be a fucked up way to find out you've got a superpower. But if you could just like re that'd be cool. re remember that old what if, uh, if if you could press a button and one person somewhere on Earth would die, but you would get a million dollars when mm -hmm. you do it. Uh, man, I would the spring on that button would be destroyed <laughs> for me. But I I've, I, I want to know, you know, if you had a superpower. What, yeah. Would you use it for good or evil? I mean, it'd be tough to to continue using it for good. I right mean, now. what's evil? I don't know. I mean, there's some things that are kind of just like naturally evil. Because if you're like, uh, what was that movie with uh, not Looper Jumper with Hayden Christensen, where, where he can, oh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he goes to robs banks all the time <clears throat> just to fund his lifestyle. Like that's not really evil. It's illegal. I mean, look, a lot of stuff is illegal. That's right. perfectly acceptable in my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all the drugs I do, for example. Um, that's really no, none of anybody's business. Um, Can I pose a question to you guys? My yeah. friend, um, I don't know if you guys know Mark Gross. He was a very funny comedian. Now he writes for 
he's over at CBS. He worked on like Mike and Molly, but um, that's not related to this. So I just want to give him a little credit. He, he always posed the question, would you rather have the power of invisibility? So you're not invisible all the time. It's just like whenever you want, or would you like the power to be able to just make someone shit their pants with your mind? I feel like if I could be invisible whenever I wanted, I can make them shit their pants either way. Right? <laughs> Dude, yeah. that's a fucking great answer. You could slip something in the. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Of, so I mean, there's the uh, the visine mm-hmm. and the in the drink kind of situation. Right. That'll do great it. answer. Uh, you solved the question, dude. Well, I don't know if I'm solving anything. I'm causing yeah. more problems, if anything. You can also just punch him in the stomach. Like I what? feel like there's going to be – like if a guy drinks his water in the morning or his coffee in the morning and then shits his pants, he's just going to assume he got something wrong that morning right. preparation-wise. Right. If he's getting punched in the stomach by an apparition <laughs> that he can't even see, I now yes. there's follow-on questions. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. Like you're going to get found out faster. Well, not. somebody's going to throw pain on you, right? Isn't that what happened with uh, in Hollow Man? Yeah. yeah, they threw pain on him. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Bacon, man. He does. He does make a pretty good murderer. I'll say that. Yeah, he's got kind of a psycho face. Wait, have you seen Dexter's kid? What's his name? The dude that played Dexter? No, uh, I have not. Uh, Michael, Michael C. Hall. C. C. Hall. Yeah, yeah. Michael C. Hall. He's his kid is like. Uh, uh, looks like he's going to be an actor too. That's a whole interesting situation there, because I thought he played Dexter in the show, and the woman that he was married to played his sister. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Now he's from North Carolina. That's not quite south enough for that bullshit, in my yeah. opinion. Well, <laughs> what about the western part of North Carolina? Yeah, maybe in the Appalachian yeah. area. Maybe I don't know. Let's not. Yeah. Let's but I think that's more. That's more like uh, uh, oxycontin than it is fucking your sister and shit. Nah, that's hill folk too. Yeah. You think hill folk? I mean, they fuck cousins, but not their actual sister, right? Uh, yeah, they're cousins. How yeah. deep into the hills do you have to get? To f- I don't know, man. I I grew, I was I grew up in South Carolina. There's plenty of weird shit going on there too. Right. I'm just wondering how far from an interstate you think you have to be before it goes from cousin to sister. <laughs> I think 50 miles from the interstate, you take Oxycontin and then feel like it's okay to fuck your sister. Yeah. That might be it. It might be a function of the drug use. So <laughs> that's possible. It's like, I mean, look, I, I'm, everything else is fucked. May as well do this too. Right. Uh, it's like the reverse of broken windows theory, except for it involves having sex with your relatives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, man, what are you, where are you going next after Florida? After Florida, I'm actually going to Arizona to do ayahuasca. Oh, sweet! Where, uh, where in Arizona? It's uh, it's like outside of Phoenix. So, are you so gonna take- do like? Uh, let me. I've always I've done ayahuasca too, and DMT and everything else. I want to do. I want to try to actually reshoot that scene from Young Guns, but on the drugs. You're, you know oh, that shit. scene where he where pops out of the chest well they're all fucking high on ayahuasca basically oh, okay. or, or peyote i think it was peyote i thought you were talking about the shootout yeah no 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 okay. not the shootout no the part where they do drugs out in the fucking desert okay i want to do that but i want to try to film an exact reboot and try to herd people into doing that while they're on the drugs <laughs> i feel like that would be <laughs> they don't find out yeah. i'm saying releases and shit yeah like no your line is this and the guy's just like drooling and staring into the sky like this guy's <laughs> a fucking he's very unprofessional get him out of here yeah. What do you think happens? Because I've done ayahuasca. I, I I only did it. I did well. I did it seven times this year, but mm-hmm. I'd never done it before that. I'd never done any hallucinogenic genetic drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think it looks like though, as as an observer? Because they there's some places you can go back and be a volunteer, and you just watch people doing ayahuasca. I wonder what the fuck it looks like. Like with your scene, what does it look? Because I've never been around people doing ayahuasca unless I was doing ayahuasca. Hmm. I wonder what that scene is like. I mean, I've been around. So- yeah, I've been around quite a few people on uh, like mescaline, peyote, and mushrooms and shit when I was sober, but not not ayahuasca. Although I, I probably a lot of open mouths and wide yeah, yeah. wide eyes and shit like that, and and staring at things for a long time. I yeah, would imagine. I mean, it's just like imagine. Uh- you know, like a movie scene where it's like there's like swelling music and everything, and like so maybe like you're kissing in Central Park, whatever. Then just yeah. zoom out, and there's no music or anything. There's just two people like put, shoving right. their mouths on each other. Yeah, like yeah. it's that's what it is. Just it's just you're on the outside right. of it. I mean, I would assume there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of facial expressions with no real context. That's probably another mm-hmm. one too. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that happens. Like you have these revelatory periods when you're on the drug, and you're like, oh shit. Yeah. And, and you're like, what the fuck? Or it's like watching someone do uh, VR 
from the oh, outside. Maybe, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Like yeah. that's pretty much the situation. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, have you ever had a bad trip? You ever had like a tough one? No. Like, uh, no, but I've done, uh, before I ever did ayahuasca or anything, I'd done acid somewhere in the 700 time range. Uh, I've been, doing, oh, shit. yeah, I've been doing it since I was a kid all through the army and stuff. So I think I was a little bit more prepared for it. Now I've heard one of the things I haven't done. One of our other hosts, Jared, uh, is, uh, Ibogaine now. Oh, I'm, I would love to try that. Yeah. My understanding is, well, we can make that happen for you pretty easily. You just gotta go down to Mexico. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> They say Ibogaine is like, like they say, you know this already, I'm sure, but like ayahuasca is like mother ayahuasca and it's like a gentle, it's a more gentle leader towards what you need to know. And yeah. supposedly the aboga is like the fucking grandfather, like it's yeah. tougher and scarier. Yeah. Uh, Jared did have some wild ass stories from Yeah, him. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like there were demons or something. He yeah. went to hell. Yeah. I mean, and he doesn't, he's, he doesn't believe in God or anything like that, but I think it's, I mean, it's an effigy, right? Like mm -hmm. your, your brain, it's theater of the mind. So your brain creates um god what is it it's like that stupid movie with jennifer lopez uh the what, cube or no something, what, what the cell the cell that's it yeah. yeah like your brain creates this backdrop where all of your problems are so you can go defeat them there mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's kind of how it yeah. works so that shit's really interesting uh i began I, I haven't done it yet i to be honest i don't know if i will because i don't really need that shit and i don't know if, if there's any real utility in putting myself through all that for no reason just to experience it you know right what i mean it seems like a lot of work is what I'm saying. Like, I'm not going to go. Probably not. Yeah. It, yeah. And you're right. Like, I think that it's a worthy for someone with maybe certain addictions and things like that, yeah. where it's like, you can't find any other way to get over it. I had, I had one, um, I had great experience with ayahuasca, but one time I did get caught in like a complete time loop mm -hmm. where I would sort of snap out of it and go, oh, I'm okay. I'm at the ayahuasca place. Everything's fine. And then everything would start the same things kept happening over and over and like a torn I was, eyes wide open, by the way, like trying to, to get a hold of reality and all these things kept happening. And it was for hours and hours yeah. of real time. And at one point I even, I had like snuck my Apple watch in and I was like, I'm just going to look at my watch and try to bring myself back down to reality. Cause I was getting fucking scared. Like I was never going to come out of this. And I looked at my watch and I was about to read the time and a lady came over and just turned into an angel and tapped my watch and it exploded in front of my eyes. And I was like, okay, that's pretty dope. It was fucking nuts. I tell everybody uh, when they're doing hallucinogens that there's two rules. One is this isn't real. And two, this won't last forever. If you can repeat those right. two sentences over to your, over and over to yourself when you get in quote unquote trouble, I don't think you'll ever have a bad trip. Uh, that's solid advice. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been doing it for a very long time. I think it's uh, useful for most people at the lower level. I don't know about ayahuasca and, and upward, but mushrooms for sure is useful. Right. This clears out the cobwebs a little bit. It, it changed. It's like, um, jump starting your car almost in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what do you like a good cup of coffee? Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. No, uh, no, coffee, no. just put some cocaine in your coffee. You'll yeah. be fine. Um, <laughs> so you're going to, uh, uh, the desert. Are you at all worried about Brian laundry? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like uh I don't know if he's gonna show up with this. I don't know if he's gonna show up with this play. Is he still out there? No, I, I, the I think he got eaten by a crocodile or some shit or an alligator. Yeah, they, they they haven't even announced his uh cause of death yet. Well, I mean, did, did they did they DNA yeah. test everything? They said they had dental records that proved it was him, but I don't believe it's, that shit. It was I, for sure. Well, they say it was for sure him. I don't know. I'm hoping I just I just read, I just read an article that says there's a bunch of Roomba video. That should show what it <laughs> they have this Roombas on the loose. That's actually where they find them. Yeah. It's in the swamps in Florida. Yeah. There's this wild Roombas as far as the eye can see. You just catch them. And, and if you can tame one, you can bring it back to your house and it'll be a slave for you. Yeah. But I see that's the other part that I'm worried about with the Roomba thing. At some point, the robots are going to take over, and I don't want to be too rude to the mechanic stuff, mechanical things around yeah. me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, thanks, Roomba. Uh, Brittany named it, gave it a name. We treat it like a member of the family. That helps hopefully, you show it, yeah. Yeah, hopefully when the robots take over, it'll yeah. just be like, it'll remember. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, he's one of the good ones. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever that means. But I'm still, I just want to be alive so I can lead the insurgency from the inside. 
Okay. You I hope they're not listening no. to this You're, right now. I mean, with all this camera equipment in front of us, maybe. How dude, wouldn't it suck though if your room is like, yeah, he's a really nice guy, but your laptop and phone are like, like he jacks off with me all day long. Yeah, here's his, <laughs> his here's his web history. Right? Uh, are you sure he's a good guy? Yeah, lap- then, your lap- I, to be honest, no attorney is going to get me out of that one. No, like, I mean, your laptop's like I was three years old, and he just kept jacking off in front yeah. of me. Yeah. <laughs> It's like John. I, I have to bring Johnny Cochran back from the dead to defend me in court. Like, look, if the glove doesn't fit, well, he wasn't wearing gloves, I guess. Right. Whatever. Yeah. If only he had more things on. Look, uh, R.I.P. Johnny Cochran. Um, there's a there's a new study out that says the Mediterranean diet might be bad for your immune system. Do you think that's real? Since you're from Greece, New York. So, the, <laughs> so. Is the Mediterranean diet, is that, a, a, is it a keto type of thing? Is it like cheese, oils, and olives? You just eat shit? a block of feta. Yeah, you eat, I don't know what it is, to be honest. It's like feta cheese shit. and fucking lamb meat, maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, when, I, when everybody always tells me, hey, you should try the Mediterranean diet. It's good for circulation and shit and anti-inflammatory. I'm like, oh, that, sound, that actually does sound good because those are problems that a lot of people have. Uh, but I just think of like carving tube meat off the fucking <laughs> with feta cheese and eating olives all day. I'm like, that can't be right. Yeah, right. That can't be that can't be right. There's maybe orzo is involved somehow. I don't know. Right. All I know is that uh, I don't really give a shit and I eat whatever I want. Yeah, I think that's uh, just don't eat like uh, two stuffed crust pizzas a day or something. You yeah, but right. I mean, fucking uh, uh, not to bring politics into any of this, but Trump eats McDonald's every day and drinks 12 fucking Diet Cokes a day, and he's still alive. How is that possible? Because he wow. is more preservative than man at this point. So do you think if he actually had natural food at some point, that's his kryptonite? Yeah. He, he would just, like, not even die, just disintegrate. Yeah. It would be like a black hole. He would, his core would turn to iron, and it would just suck the rest of him in. If baked salmon touched his lips, he would be that dude <laughs> in Last Crusade. Just <laughs> Or it would be like... Uh, uh, Schwarzenegger in Total Recall, where his eyes bug out and yeah. shit. Either way, right. you know, all right. It's got to be right. a QPC. It's got to be a quarter pounder with what, cheese. Yeah, what's your diet? How do you, how do you stay uh, trim on the road there, bud? I mean, you look like you're in pretty good shape. Uh, dude, th- I, I had a rough quarantine. Like, I fucking, I just now I'm getting back to normal. I was a disaster. And uh, it's, dude, I do a lot of, like, I jump rope. Jumping rope is the ultimate throw it in your suitcase you can work out in 11 minutes even if you're busy actually if i do that like a few times a week it's all good and i also have a thing where whenever i'm on the phone especially with someone that talks a lot i walk the entire time i don't answer the phone until i start walking i've never sounded older than right now nice. but i really do like i just keep it like big big long walks i you know i i started um the best thing ever i started hitting my son just turned 13 and you, in order to go to planet fitness you have to be 13 I started going with him, and it's the be- it's one of the best things that's ever had. It's it's the most fun thing ever. So that's kind of keeping. Well, me, they've got pizza on Friday, right? Yeah, I would say, does your kid like outperform you yet in anything? Or are you like, fuck, god damn it? Mm. Bas- basketball, he can crush me. and He's thirteen. Well, you crush me. Get his autograph. There's nothing creepy about getting your own <laughs> son's autograph, right? That should be fun. I know right? that. I know him. Yeah, yeah. I jump up's good too because if you're doing it like a hotel room, people below you just think you're banging out every day. Yeah, like just going yeah, bananas yeah. on somebody. You're kind of setting the tone. You yeah, just got to yeah. leave like a can of cat food out front. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and when I jump rope, I always do yell "fuck yeah," keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, nice. it's if it's if they pick up that it's two dudes' voices, that makes it even uh, uh, funnier to me. Yeah, to be honest, more dominant. I wish more gay men would be in hotels having sex, making a lot of noise because it just I I enjoy when other people are uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite things is to see other people in, in not like physical discomfort or not having psychological problems, but I mean, just like clutching their pearls. It's yeah. really, really funny to me to see that. I don't know why. I guess it's because it's so ridiculous what some people take seriously and what they don't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm a piece of shit. I probably am. Dude, That's I just funny. did a, um, I just did the Gutfeld show. I don't know if you guys have oh, ever yeah. seen that. <clears throat> And um, there was this there was this gay gentleman who was hilarious on the show, and we got talking about getting divorced and breakups. And he said, like the way to get over a breakup when you're, you know, he's like, I just I just got broken. He goes, you get out there, and um, he's a gay guy, and he goes, and you just bang every gay dude you can for like a week and gets out of your system. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, but as a heterosexual guy, they the they don't want to with me. What, you know what I mean? Gay like that's. Dudes? Like the advantage, not the gators, but like to go get a woman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if you got, 
you know, like the guy has, it's such a, it's a, I don't know. It's, it might be an easier time to get over the breakup because everyone probably does want to fuck, but a guy like me, it's, you know, you got to wait for the right time and place and the girls are going to, you know, it's not like they're going to be into it. In the well, same you're way. in Florida. Isn't, like, isn't that where Robert Kraft was going to those uh, rub and tugs and yeah. stuff? I mean, look, there's options. Oh shit. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, uh, I, Have you guys I, ever been to a rub and tug? No, a legit I, rub no, and no. I, I, I haven't. I mean, it's, I, nobody's going to be able to jack me off better than I can jack myself off. It's <laughs> stupid. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. I don't know if it's from getting older or whatever, but I remember when I was younger, I'd be like, man, I wish this, you know, you'd be with a girl. Oh, I'll give you a massage. I'd be like, oh, I hope this massage turns into a hand job. And at my age, I'm always like, man, I wish this hand job would turn into a massage. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Just, yeah. For real. Just, like, you're, you're just, all right, honey. I appreciate the effort. Right. But you just don't know what you're doing. My yeah. back hurts. I want to carry my suitcase all day. Yeah. It's fucking. Yeah. I, I want a sad ending if you got one. <laughs> sad ending. <laughs> uh, how is so you write on TV shows uh, and and do stand up and stuff, right? How is booking the the former like getting writing jobs and stuff? Uh, not living in LA and specifically living well in these Alaska. days, it's probably a lot of Zoom calls, anyways, with all right. the COVID restrictions. But you were doing that there. before, presumably as well. Yeah. Dude, it's Alaska's made everything really difficult. But I'll say, like most of the, every job I've ever gotten on TV, y- yeah, there was an interview, but I had already worked for three of the guys that were in the room or hiring. So, but it's fucking hard. Like that, but that's my only avenue. I don't do the regular. Whenever someone, whenever someone asks me, like, how do I get, like, how do I go? I, I go, don't ask me because my way is fucked up. Like, I don't have an agent. <laughs> I don't. It doesn't work like like it's it's probably the hardest way. But yeah, every being in Alaska, it's I moved to L.A. when I get writing jobs like I've only done a, I've probably only done like three, four. Like I wrote on CBS for Man with a Plan. Mm-hmm. And that was one of those situations where I started doing this thing years ago. It's actually how I started working for Rob Schneider, where whenever I saw someone do stand up or whenever a friend said, oh, I wrote a script like I wrote a pilot. I always say no matter who it is, I've done this with an Uber driver in the last two weeks. I say, Hey, send it to me. If I have a second, I'll write some jokes. And with every script, I don't think I've missed one. I just, in like an hour, I write like 50 jokes and I, I send it back. It's just like a thing I do. It makes me keeps my brain sharp. Mm-hmm. It's something to do on an airplane. And that job at CBS and working for Schneider came from just a guy. My friend had a show on CBS. I wasn't writing for the show. And I said, dude, would you send me the scripts every week? I'll write some jokes. I go for if they're not good. Don't use them. And then they started like using my jokes. And then when there was a, a spot open. I got to come in and write, but hadn't, you know, that's the only way I could have done it from Alaska. Right. But then I did move to LA like for the job. <laughs> that's a, you, not you, convenient. Though. You were uh, what man with a plan with, um, Matt LeBlanc, right? LeBlanc. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Does he even best gig ever did best gig at Kevin Nealon mm-hmm. is just was amazing. And I had three, I had two guys in the, uh, in the writer's room that were like, I don't know if you guys know Tommy John again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Super funny, dude. Mm-hmm. I had two like incredibly good friends in the room. So it wasn't much different than if we were sitting here talking on a podcast. It was a joy. Yeah. Like I ran to work every day. That well, I was so sad when that thing got canceled. We had four seasons. We needed one more to get syndicated. Oh, and man. whatever happened, and we didn't go back. But man. Well, that's gonna that be sucks speaking for of Matt speak- LeBlanc. Yeah. What's he gonna yeah, do? Yeah, he's he's probably out of yeah. money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's been on TV before. Uh I that syndication thing is probably going to change. I mean, they've already lowered the number recently, yeah. but now with, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I like the, all this IATSE shit that's going on right now. And then the, the shift, like we've seen it on the award shows, the award shows boxed out streaming for a while, mm-hmm. but eventually they were like, all right, only good stuff is coming through streaming now. So we've right. got to pay attention to it or we're going to be uh, uh, irrelevant. I wonder how like these, all these old school, Netflix licensing deals. Yeah. That, that shit's going to have to change now. I mean, there, there's going to have to be some way for creators to hold on to the, the replay of their stuff over time. I mean, you, you guys were smart to, to maintain uh, your IP, but that's not the case for a lot of folks, right? Especially that have this yeah. shit. This, like they sold their show to Netflix, their first season for $300,000. And that's all they'll ever get for it. That's very bizarre. Yeah. That's the TV. It's a TV fucking right? loophole. Yeah. They had no idea that streaming meant, Netflix yeah. like they had no idea that, that this is what would end up did, did it I should know this but did it change recently I'm only asking that because man with a plan 
is on Netflix, I think. Yeah. And every once in a while, I do get it. I do get a check for a couple hundred dollars. And I was wondering if they switch something up. Or something. <laughs> they they so must have right there. There has to be something, but I don't think it's. Um, I don't think that's finalized yet. Like, there's no. You used to know if you did a hundred episodes or eighty-eight episodes. I think it is now, or eighty. Maybe it's eighty-two now. It's eighty-eight or some something like that. Uh, you're in syndication then, and then you get paid residuals on your mm-hmm. shit forever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that there's something that's just in stone like that, or if that's part of back end deals with Netflix. And maybe, maybe it won't be something that's set in stone. You know what I mean? But that's gonna that's gonna be a huge deal moving forward. Like if somebody, oh, yeah. if, if people like, I mean, for example, if Happy Madison wants to do a, uh, uh, they have this goal to do a five uh, season series about whatever mm-hmm. the fuck, they're not going to fucking be able to attract the talent that they need to unless they spend more capital on the front end. If that back end residual doesn't exist, right? Right. It's not gonna happen. Even a big production house like that wouldn't be able to do it. So how the fuck is and- smaller guys? Yeah, and if it was Happy Madison who works with a lot of guys that are like friends of theirs, like yeah, they're yeah. all kind of buddies, yeah. they might not want to go over there because it wouldn't be a good deal for the other guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's guys. I wonder what's going to happen. We're we're definitely in a creator economy now, but it's one thing to be able to create your own content and another thing to be able to distribute your own created content digitally, right? right. That's not easy to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you – a lot of people had these machinations on having their own website where – you could watch whatever the fuck or whatever, but they didn't take into account how much bandwidth costs and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it's it's a lot. Yep. It's a lot of money. Well, I'm sure whatever deal they negotiate will be irrelevant again in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, Things are moving it, pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah it's, it's fucking. I mean, like, because this one that they negotiated was, is only like 13 years old. Uh, it yeah. was like 08, 09, something like that. Yeah. 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 We'll see what happens. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I really don't care either because that's not my industry. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Although I do care in a, in a sense. Like I often you, – you're talking about you have – somebody will send you a piece of material and you just write jokes and give it to it. I mean it's presumably just for free. I do shit like that all the time just because I'll have an idea like, you know what would be cool is this. I'm like, well, I don't have time for yeah. that. Let's find somebody that can do that. Here, hey, you know what would be cool is this. Yep. And they're like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm like, yeah, go do that because I want to watch it, please. <laughs> I don't have time for this yep. shit. Dude, I've done so many of those types of things for free for years, mm-hmm. and so many of them have led to jobs. It's it's crazy. Like right now, I'm doing punch up on this new CBS show called Smallwood, and it's it's like a paid gig, and it's from from a buddy who I just would send me scripts now and then. It's it's crazy how much people. Yeah, it's the old like adding value without in your brain really not going. I better fucking get something. It's some future time from doing this. It's legitimately going, I just want to make this better for my friend. And it's just somehow, yeah, it just kind of turns, it sort of turns into gigs once, once somebody has a project where well, they need to you somebody. sound like a fucking socialist. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, well, I almost fell asleep during my last answer. I apologize for that. No, it's fine. I've, uh, okay. it's, look, Biden fell asleep at the fucking conference in Geneva the other day. Well, it was about CO2. He was up late at night, out fucking whores and shit, doing drugs. Because oh, yeah. it's all legal there, right? In, in Geneva? Yeah. I, I don't think. Know. I don't think there's a – like, it's like a weird country where, yeah, everything's kind of legal, but everything's buttoned up at the same time. Yeah. That's – Dude, that's the, that's the first time I ever, like, really related to Biden. I was yeah. like, you say summit, I'm fucking taking a nap. Like, this is bullshit. yeah. yeah. The first time I was like, get some shut idea. There's nothing. There's nothing you need to hear. No, nah, he needs. He's look. I I thought about knitting him a shawl, um, <laughs> just because it's cold. He's he, in the mountains. He looks, yeah, yeah, he looks. He looks frail. Uh, wait, it is in the mountains, right? Yeah, it's yeah. cold there. It is, it is chilly up there. I mean, look, look. Isn't uh, it funny how? Isn't it funny how when he does those? Um, whenever he talks now, before they ask questions, he he leaves. Almost like when you post a video, this is not funny. You disable the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're scared of what's going to happen. He's just it like, is, come on. He, did, he actually did it this morning. He goes, oh, we'll be back later to answer questions. And he just walked off the stage. When the, like, what the fuck is going on here? Dude? Amazing. That's the one thing I enjoyed about Trump uh, is that he would just stay and argue with the press. Like he had to be dragged on. He just enjoyed All arguing. Day. Yeah. It, like it, it was at least entertaining. God damn. Dude. That was fun. Fuck. Yeah. Whatever. I don't care. I hear at the Biden briefings, they start by telling him who he is, which yeah. has to get old. Yeah, no, he's you know? got, he's there on his paper, just a picture of himself. And then underneath it says, you're the president. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, but is it like a fun caricature? Like he's skateboarding into the White House? Oh, no. Yeah, he's surfing or something. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. Or he's on a go-kart or mm-hmm. something. Yeah, for sure. 
because uh, I mean, otherwise you're not going to grab his attention. Right. Yeah. Come yeah. on, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, good luck in Florida, Sarasota. Good luck in your next stop. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Super funny guy. Does that film have a title yet? The one. Yeah, it's a good. It question. does. It's called. It's called Daddy Daughter Trip, and like, I, yeah, and it, John Cleese and say, a bunch of bunch of funny dudes in there. So look for that in a few months, probably on Netflix. For that, on damn Daddy yeah. Daughter Trip. That are uh, you guys are great, man. I, I really appreciate. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely look out for that. Uh, Cleese is a good get. I didn't know he was still doing stuff. Dude, that's fucking. Can awesome. I say a very very short story? Yeah. So like anything about John I would, I got I went to dinner with Cleese because I wrote this movie, and so we were like pitching him the role. And so I went to dinner with him. And I was starstruck. I love this guy. And it was like, you know, when your parents like certain music and you hate their music, they hate your music and you don't agree on anything. I was like that with my dad for a while. And I remember one day we were wanting, we were watching Monty Python and um, we both were laughing and I was like, Oh fuck. It's the thing we both like. Like it was a real crazy. I just in the middle of dinner, I told John Cleese that story and he, he seemed to like really appreciate it. Mm. And um, at the end of the dinner, he kind of gave me his phone number. I'm like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. And then as time passed, it turned out I got to, well, I mean, I, thought, I, I gave myself a, the role, I gave myself a scene with Cleese mm. just out of selfishness because he's my dad's favorite dude. Right. Yeah. And that man is, you know, when you meet somebody and you want them to be a certain way, he's, he's everything and more, man. Like he's everything you ask him about. He's not sick of telling the stories. Hilarious story for every sketch he's ever done. Funny story about every movie. Just a just a sweetheart of a guy. It was uh, it's been so cool to to meet him. That's great. The only thing that can make that better is if he went full Captain Phillips on you. It was like, I'm, I'm your dad now. <laughs> it's like you, you're like, all right, you have to take your dad's name out of your phone and shit and nice. put his name in place. Like, all right, John, this like, is getting kind of weird. Me buddy. As dad, yeah, yeah. It's like, right, man, cool. John, I loved all this until just now. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. you made it weird, and I've got to go. Uh, <laughs> Well, we appreciate you coming on today. I'm definitely going to check that movie out. It sounds fucking funny. Yeah, cool, man. Have a awesome. great rest of your show, guys. Yeah, good, for good sure. chatting. Yeah, yeah. you, you uh, right, take it, hey, uh, tell everybody where they can find your uh, uh, comedy on online and shit like that so they can go check oh, it out. Oh, yeah. People have no idea who I am. So if you just go to robschneidersfriend.com, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can find all my dates. That's really my website. And you can find my dates. Then I'm uh, I am Jamie Lisso on Instagram. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out thanks, today. Man. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks a lot for yeah. uh, Dan Holloway and Jamie Lisso. Yep. This is Drinking Bros.